I'm Rachel Nolan from Kennedy Nolan. My crew are just down here, project architect there, Matilda Blasey, these other two. Um, this is a new beach house in Summers that we're presenting today. We're presenting it in new too, but let's try and make this quite particular to interiors. Um, so before we kick off, this house is in Summers and it's on the lands of the Dungarong people. So we'd like to acknowledge them before we kick this off because it's a very special piece of country. Um, a few years ago, we presented another family member's house, which is called Always. So we kind of like where this is being positioned just across the bay as another extension to that in Summers. And you can see where it sits just north of Phillip Island. So these are old mates, these clients. We've done some work for them over the years. We're quite close with them. So it's a very personal project for our practice. They'd been, um, they'd had this house right on the beach at Summers for 20 years. And it was a pretty tired, um, actually a good one to point out is the little, I haven't even got my thingy down here, um, is the little um, boat shed at the bottom. So just to remember that one. Um, north's up the page, south is the sea, and this is an interesting problem with the interiors as well. So this is what they'd been holidaying in for the last 20 years, really damp. It, it was done and finished, this building. And in, over this time, um, one of our clients ended up um, having an injury where she incurred quite a big disability. So this new house was all about access. So you can see this house absolutely didn't perform on that front. But with these beautiful, beautiful views. And then in the garden too, a little boat shed, just a boat store that went out and it was a promontory. So this is something we rebuilt and we'll kind of get to in the presentation. So incredibly close to the sea and you can hear it. Now our clients came to us, they were excited about doing this house. Three um, kids in their 20s. Um, they'd been holidaying together. They'd been in Mexico and they all, Louis Barragan, loving it. So we were looking at Barragan and this felt good. They were interested in colour. This felt wrong. Um, so this kind of intensity that they were drawn to, we were like, how do we then move this back to a really, uh, something that maybe meant something here in Australia or meant something about another place they'd been to. So we introduced Queenie Mackenzie to them and they didn't know about her. She's a Gidja woman from the Kimberley and had kind of painted with Rover Thomas and, out of her, and this is her country, which is Pernalulu, which is otherwise known as the Bungle Bungles. And this was also a place that they'd holidayed together and had very special time in this country. So we redirected the whole interior around this type of palette when they come to us with Barragan. And this is just one painting of the work of Queenie Mackenzie, which is done with ochres. So it's the country. The painting is using the country to make the picture or to tell the story. So we really started this as a five disparate adults as clients who really came together when we're talking about developing this house, they talked about a palette. And this one painting really helped us. So we started with Shishugi Ban, the Japanese chart timber, as a base. When we look at Queenie's work, there's that beautiful black base which allows the, the colours to be vibrant. And then we work with Peter Bartlett, who's just a star, we'll talk about him a little bit later, to develop this other palette colour that came into it. So there was extensive work done on that. And this got laid into the palette. We then looked at using Oregon pretty extensively through the, pro the project as another beautiful orange timber. We looked at concrete. The clients were very keen to get some off form in there to prove us on site. And that came into the palette. And we built again with Persian travertine. Um, our, the, the, our client's father is a stonemason, so the idea of using stone and stone with beautiful embedded colour was a really nice part of the story. Terrazzo. We looked at craft as well. like. Not you, Stephen Crafty. At um, the craft coming into the project with terracotta, and then that built again. So these palettes were really central to bringing everyone around the table who all had different um, ideas, but were brought together by colour. We looked at um, using paint, but watered down paint, so we could still feel the quality of the timber. And this came in as another place where we looked at bright colour popping off dark colour, mosaics, natural carpet. And this is Peter again. And we looked at, at this beautiful bent glass. And that came in there as well. Um, old time collaborating, collaborated with us is, a, is Amanda. And we looked at how the outside landscape could also help inform the palette of the building. And there's an existing tree pansy in the house at the front, which, we, which she was interested in Europeans. He was interested in eucalypts. And so we were, these two colors that also informed how the house felt inside. Now, 
There are three levels to this house, which I'll shoot through really quickly, but knowing north's this way and south and the sea view's that way, there's a real tension between needing north lighter view and a south view. And then we had this, mostly it's all indigenous plants, but there was this native, uh, intense European tree corridor that also was going to be used to shade the house. And we had, we had north facing house. A lower level and then an upper level, and I'll go through them more carefully. But basically, we had to make this house look like it was a two-storey house with planning. But you can see central to that, the circulation is key. Now, she's not just in a wheelchair, she requires a carer. So with this house, it was about us really working hard to have full, as much accessibility as she wanted in there. There's a couple of little places she can't get to, but she should be able to go everywhere. Now, the other, the other part of that is the interiors are so important when accessibility is an issue. So how you can be connected to that incredible view but feel protected from being seen as well. So there's a real tension there. And absolute, um, our objective was to make sure she was very happy in there. So just a few shots from outside to contextualise the inside. When you move down the site, before you, kind of, you can start to look through that piece at the end, but on the left, again, kind of zoomorphic exploration and a practice where something suggests something and you're not sure what it is. So it conceals the interiors. And then the bridge part, which feels quite open either side. Now that's, you can see the tree pansies, baby, baby garden, all about to come up. Amanda's gardens come up incredibly quickly. And this, then this is looking through. So the interiors feel very much a part of the outside language of this building. So primary um, of importance to our practice was a fully accessible home. And there are four parts to this, and I'll rock through these. So the one we called the apartment was the one that there was full wheelchair, easy accessibility coming into the house. You can see the circulation piece there in, in the kind of pink render. And that this was a suite that was very accessible for someone in a wheelchair and for her to even have a go at trying to get around there herself. So this also helped us in terms of even how we value manage this project, that the, if we're talking square meterage rates, this was a very appointed and kind of luxurious level for her to be in. This is moving into that space through the bridge underneath to bring her into it. You can see on the left there the circulation piece, um, hidden lift and stair. And then how close you can feel to outside. It was a very early move we made not to have balconies on the south, but to do all those jobs of balconies and the thickness of those, of those doors. They do a big job. So very kind of a pointed, comfortable, and hopefully you can start to see the kind of palette development that came through this. Um, terrific builder. Um, very handsome electrician, and <laughs> them doing all, going all sorts of um, extra miles to kind of make our clients um, committed to this, love this project, beautiful craft in it. And this is looking down the other end to the living room, the window, I've really got a rock, and even bringing in the curtains um, in terms of playing into that texture, the little details that we worked on with them. And then this space could feel very much like you were connected to outside because those beautiful big windows open up. So really lovely level of window quality. When you open up, oh, you can just hear the sea. Back into her bedroom suite. Um, another big um, a, a success of the project is how we could make a very accessible bathroom look beautiful and kind of dignify that. Upstairs, the children, growing children, um, so that this was a less appointment in terms of its kind of square meterage fit out, moving up, moving through, moving across that bridge past an outside space that they could use. So this is growing children who one day will have children could come home and use this wing. So it's a sensibility, another little house at the top. And then flexible living underneath. We head downstairs in the turret and move to this other space. Um, Matilda here, project architect, but really intense use of colour here. So this could also be a place for a full-time carer. So we, there was all sorts of things that had to be kind of gently hidden in this, but be used if there wasn't a carer there as well. So it was extensive, long process, and, and then a room that could be a living room, but also double as a place where she could do her exercises. That's it from outside. One last little bit, which was we really refurbished that little promontory, so she, we could make a wheelchair access out onto the top of it, and then there was one little bit that was underneath, which became an additional hideaway, which was not wheel, wheelchair accessible, which was sitting in this piece, which was right on the beach and under this piece with a little outside bath and really something that played back to the kind of beach houses of old that felt a little bit more rustic and we could recycle things. They had another second life down there. So, I mean, it was a great challenge for us 
to finish this project, that's the little bathroom at the back of it, to finish this project where this now becomes a house where five adults who actually all no longer live together use this house to come back together and actually strangely the interior palette working on that with them has really helped bind them to this project. They feel like they all had a hand in it. Um, so I think that's probably where the success for us lies.